Today we're in a fairly large kitchen that has a good size island workspace right here in the center. But as you can see, the predominant color in here is white. So what we're going to do is cover the top of this island with a decorative tile. It will help give the kitchen some color and some style. It's going to cost less than $100, but best of all, you can do it yourself. The first thing that you want to do is take your tile and do a dry fit. So put your first piece flush with the edges. Now this is going to help you do two things. The first thing, it's going to allow you to create the pattern that you want. And secondly, it's going to show you whether or not your tiles are going to fit. Now in our case, we have about a two inch overhang. So to solve that problem, what we're going to do is build out these rounded corners with some lumber to make it square. You could cut your tile if you wanted to, but we don't want to cut this tile and mess up our decorative pattern. Now remember the tile overhangs by two inches, so we at least have to extend the island out that far. But if that's all we do, then our tiles are still going to be pressed up close to each other. So what I've done is taken two one by twos and I've pre-cut these to fit and I'm going to be attaching one of these on each side. Now what this is doing, not only is it squaring up my corner, but it's given me an inch and a half on each side with enough space left over so that I'll have a good grout line. 52. Now that I've measured lengthwise, I've determined that I need an inch extension on each end. To get that extra inch, I've taken two boards. I've used a three-quarter inch board again, and I've also used a quarter inch board. I've put these together and cut them lengthwise. And that's going to leave me enough space again for the good grout line that I need. So I'm using two and a half inch screws to attach my pieces. Let me line that up. Okay, good. That's flush. And I'm just going to attach these the same way as I did the other boards. Now that I've got the frame built for the island, I'm ready to lay the tile. But before I do that, I need to rough this laminate surface up just enough so the mastic or the glue will stick. Now to do that, I'm using a rotary sander, but you can use any type of sander, even sandpaper, to get the job done. The idea here is to simply rough the surface up enough just to take the sheen off. Alright, now we're on the downhill side of our project. I'm using a 1 8 inch trowel, which is notched, to spread this mastic on. And I'm going to be working in sections about a third of the way down at one time. You just want to spread this on, just like this. Now in addition to putting it on the laminate, you also want to put it on the wood as well, because remember, your tile is going to sit out here on the extension. Now we get to see the benefits of our dry fit. We've already established how we want our pattern to be, so now it's just a matter of setting these tiles into place. When you're laying the tiles on the edge, you need to leave an eighth of an inch space, and that's going to accommodate this piece of tile, which we'll use for our border. And if you don't trust your eye as you're working along, go ahead and use this piece and lay it up against here. And also, you need to leave a small space for your grout line. What you want to do after all your tiles are in place is go ahead and do another dry fit with your border. So I'm just going to line these up against the edge, again leaving a small space in between each one for the grout line. And now when I get down here on the end, we have another overhang with the border. So I need to cut that off to fit, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and glue these all in place, and then I can mark that one properly. We've got mastic on the side of the wood, and now we're ready for the border. This flat piece is what we're actually gluing to the side, so you want to push this down flush with that piece of wood. And make sure that this is flush with this piece of tile here. Now if you'll notice, this is hanging down a little bit from the wood, and that's okay because it's flush up here at the top. All right, now I'm ready for the end piece. And I need to leave enough space for the grout line, so I'm going to line this up and then mark where I need to cut off the overhang. And you want to cut it off flush with this piece of wood. So I'm going to mark it right there and then go cut it off. Now 
The edge bend has been cut and it's in place, but you can see that there's still a gap right here in this corner. So to fill that in, I'm going to use these corner pieces and this will fill up the space just like that. The grout is easy to apply. What you want to do is take your float, put some grout down, and then work this diagonally with your seams. And you just want to work this back and forth just like this and you can see that it's actually filling in these seams. So what you're left with is a sealed countertop that's going to look really nice. The grout dries in just a couple of minutes. Then you can take a damp sponge to wipe this up. Use a bucket of water and you'll want to wring out most of the water out of your sponge and just take it right across the top of your counter just like this. You can see how pretty this is going to look once we're finished. This is a very fun and simple project that you could do yourself in a couple of days. And that's only because you need to let the mastic set up for 24 hours before you can add the grout to finish your project. We spend $100 to do this, but the cost is up to you depending on what tile you choose. And as you can see, the result could be a stylish new centerpiece for your kitchen. Mm -hmm.